All right, thank you everybody for being part of this thing as we look at this film. Yes, I know it's late, but uh, for those who are out there who's a late night grinder like me, uh, Justin, he's one of those guys that's got an endless motor. He's going to always fly out to the ball. He's one of those guys as well that's going to pursue and make the quarterback think before they even throw the ball if he's coming off of that particular side. Uh, normally, um, his production speaks for itself as it relates to like up the pressure up the middle he can place off the edge he can put his hands in the dirt whoever decide to pick up this particular guy they're having <laughs> a one hell of a bargain for like 14 to maybe 13 million dollars a year uh maybe uh this would be his last contract so maybe you can squeeze in more of a quote unquote let's say this right here maybe you can do this you can squeeze in more of guaranteed money and he might fall to what you're trying to put out there for him because this is the thing um you got to figure out a way to consistently pr create pressure and he find those things whether it's a running quarterback whether it's a quarterback standing like a statue he had over 14 forced fumbles in his career so he's always going for the ball always knocking the ball out if you there having the ball, holding the ball too high, if you're not moving around in the pocket, he will make you pay. He flying out to the ball. Um, and it's one of those things. Shout out to those that's, that's in the chat box. Shout out to Q. Shout out to Young Wilson. Appreciate you. Uh, thank those. Uh, Jamarion, thank you uh, for tuning in to the nation. Just think about this. When you looking at this particular guy coming off the edge, I know a lot of people going to say, okay, He's a uh, he's a linebacker. No, 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 no. He is a guy that's going to create pressure. I call these guys sack specialists. And uh, here's why. When we look up pro football focus, and we'll pause this right quick. We'll pause this. And if you look up pro football focus and you look at everything he was able to do in his uh, career with the Kansas City Chiefs, you will see. You would actually see his first year, 2011, 5.5 sacks. His second year in 2012, 10 sacks. Third year, 11 sacks. Just ravin' it up. In 14, 22 sacks. In 2015, hey, 7.5 sacks. Of course, 2016, he had an injury, and he still got you four sacks. And then 17 to follow up, he had 9.5 sacks. And with only 12 games, he had nine sacks. So those productions right there, 78 sacks, 78.5 sacks, that's a lot, guys. That is a lot to put out there. And I, I like that particular uh, part of his game, being consistent and getting to the quarterback. <laughs> that's what football is about, putting the quarterback on the back, right? Getting out to the quarterback, bursting, coming off to the edge, making sure that you can wreak havoc out there and whether regardless <laughs> this guy has an endless motor flies out to the ball like no other and i thinking that i guess the kansas city chiefs are getting rid of him because they know they got to pay up a lot of ponies down the line so you might want to get rid of remember you get rid of somebody two years too soon versus two years too late and it'll be like okay they like d4 right now so if you can get somebody that can crash up field, can get it, get pressure into the inside, make the quarterback pay, you got you a diamond in the rough. Yes, indeed. Jackie Smith, appreciate you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of this thing. Jake, thank you for tuning in as well. As we look at this film, I just want you guys, this is the all 22 view. So uh, as you look at everything, you can see that he creates this type of thing out there. <laughs> two year deal 20 year million yeah 20 million immediately impact this is for leadership this is from Jam jamarion yeah um the thing is when you're talking about a player this he got the measurables he's six foot three 258 pounds Khalil mack is six foot three 253 pounds d, d law the markets where the marcus lawrence is six three 6'2", 253 pounds. So that's that's not a problem, you know, as far as if they used to play linebacker or 4'3". A, a baller is a baller. A baller would never say, well, you know, this is not me. Look at it, playing the wide nine, coming shooting right up the middle. Remember, I'm telling you, he will knock the ball out of the hand of the opposition. That's him, turnover guy. <laughs> he is that guy, you know, flying around 
and he gets to the quarterback. Now, granted, a lot of times people will say, okay, how is he against the run? Man, <laughs> he's underrated against the run. He can fly out to the ball on those parameters too. So I, I think that with a guy like him, he's an animal. I mean, he's a guy that's going to create pressure, create turnovers. Watch this. Give me the ball. The ball belongs to me. Hey, <laughs> golf was sitting like a duck. It's, it's, it's dangerous when you're a pocket quarterback. When you can flex him in, you can put him inside, twist stunts, he come around, he swipes for the ball every opportunity. He's seasoned no guy, and he's been there before. Uh, I forgot when we go back to the pro football focus look. Let, let me pause this again, and we're going to show you how many times this guy didn't earn his stripes. Let me show you. You guys see that asterisk there? Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl. That's four times, fam. And and one can argue too as well. Um even in his lean years, his his, his downtime, four four sacks, 2017, 9.5 sacks, 2018, only out only 12 games. One can argue if he played the full season, he would have had he was on pace for doing at least 12 or maybe 11 sacks. So you're getting a high production. Now, I do know that a lot of people have reservations as it relates to the age factor. But to me, six foot three, still 258 pounds. Somebody born in 89, they still young, in my opinion. Still a young guy. Uh, still can give you at least, can give you at least two to three years. Now, I would sign them for, like I said, somebody put it in the uh, comment box. It was like a two year, 20 million deal. Uh, that deal probably will work for him, actually. It probably will work for him. And I think um, he will be a good, valuable asset to anybody team. And then he will be a guy that you can tell people, hey, I've been in the trenches. I've been hurt before. I had got the big money before as well. Uh, I'm looking to just go ahead and play for a team to go get that ring. You know what I mean? So I think that he's going to come with that mindset. And then also he's going to come with the mindset of trying to help out the youth. You kind of like what D. Ware did. You know, you guys remember D. Ware? His, his stats and everything. It's close, but not all the way close to D. Ware's. But, you know, same type of guy, right? <laughs> Edge guy, pursuit to the ball. Look how he just goes for the fumble. Just wipe away. This is what he do. <laughs> he will get to the quarterback regardless of the scenario, whether it's inside pressure, outside pressure. And um, that's just that's just his skill set, guys. Uh, I, I can't rave on this guy enough. Uh, being a leader out there on the front four, on that line for the Chiefs, uh, I know for sure they will miss his production regardless. <laughs> I, I like Chris Jones. I like uh, D. Ford. And I like the other kid that they got out there. But I guarantee you, Justin, it will be missed out there for the Chiefs. I know for sure that they probably thinking about, man, how can we figure out a way to bring him back if nobody bite to this bait? <laughs> Shout out to you, Joe Lopez. Appreciate you. Uh, Young Wilson, what's going on, man? He said, Law, love this dude, but I still want us to be the middleman on the defense, too. We need to make a run for the next three to five years. Yeah, but every now and then you get a gap guy, right? A guy that can fill into the gap, somebody that you can put out there to help put that bridge out there for the next guy. Time and time again, Cowboys been bit, especially by the defensive front four. The Jay Ratcliffe's of the world, uh, uh, the uh, dispenser kid. Uh, who else we've been bit by down the line? We've been bit um by randy gregory david irvin i mean we had a rotational piece with this defensive front um the other guy um the guy that kind of threw the get threw the lady on the guns what was his name um i forgot his name it was something too greg hardy yeah that was his name <laughs> greg hardy's of the worlds you know uh the one year wonders and things like that the the, the benson mayo was the um the, the George Selvey so the Chris Canties the guys that if you see a little flash there and then all of a sudden they gone so what I'm thinking that and this is before Mario Manelli of course Chris Canty but I'm just going around telling you guys all what's been going on with the Cowboys front four 
There's no consistency at all. The only consistent player that you had was D. Ware. Nobody else been consistent. Even Demarcus Lawrence. I love what he can do. I love what he brings to the table. But as far as consistent matter, eh, just not consistent in a sense as it relates to whether it be health, whether it be PEDs, whether it be, hey, uh, I, I, I got this injury going on here and there. So th those are problems. Those are things that we can say and we can put it like a footnote on those things and say, okay, how can we better our best? And the best thing that we can do is still just turn over every stone we can find. Let me go back to this right here. This was a divisional game. The reason why I said this game was important because he, he, he ended up getting three sacks in a divisional round. This is a playoff game. Remember, the Colts were red hot in this game. Watch how he pursued. They gave him this sack. They counted this as a sack because Luck didn't get to the LOS. That's pursuing to the ball. That's not giving up. That's high motor. That's, hey, high intensity. Fight, push through, fight through. Watch how he cut him off on the leverage. He didn't squeeze in tight and still hit him. Gave him a little quarterback love right there. That's what I like, guys. Uh, a guy with a high endless motor, man, I would take that every day, even twice on Sunday. Watch how he come across that edge. Push, bull rush. I mean, <laughs> my bad, that was deep. Boy, that, was Chris, that was Chris Jones. Why, he come across the middle, I meant to say. Let me, let me rewind right here. See, this guy line up on everywhere on the field. He lines up on the right side, the left side, inside. The guy create pressure. That's what you want regardless. You don't want a guy that's limited one side of the field. Yeah, this is a better view right here for me. Uh, standing up. Don't even have his hand in dirt. Ooh, shot step. Shot the, shot the gap in there. Now, I would say this. Rob Marinelli don't like his guy standing up like that. And they ain't going to shoot no gap. <laughs> But I, I still would see him being resourceful if he come on, if he decide, if the Cowboys decide to go get this guy. <laughs> the division around playoff guys. Frank Clark uh, is too. Robinson, appreciate you, man. You're a late night rider like we like me, huh? Uh, he says uh, said he's not signing the franchise either. I'm worried that the Seattle might trade him. Hmm. It could be possible. Uh, it could be possible. Um. <clears throat> These guys, the thing is with, with, with football, and, and I was talking about this earlier. Um, Miss Scout and Pro says, and I'm going to see what she says. She says, not a scheme fit. Don't start that law. Laugh out loud. <laughs> hey, hey. I look at it. I look at Justin's skill set equivalent to, now I'm not calling him D. Ware, no, but it's equivalent. I mean, you're talking about a 3-4 guy that you can flex around to a 4-3, not afraid to put his hands in the dirt, not afraid to crash up middle. But uh, I, I really think that Rob Marinelli, he should just look at it like this. Anybody, <laughs> Justin would be better than anybody that he thought George Seve was or, or Benson Mayowa or, or these other guys that they call orphans. You can't put you can't put Justin and, and orphans in the same sentence, but uh, it's just one of those things. Jackie Smith says, Miss Jackie says, uh, we got to pay the law. Period. I think that the Cowboys are willing to pay D law twenty million a year. I think that the problem is with the uh, whole argument of between D law's camp and the Cowboys camp would be this right here. They are disagreeing with the guaranteed money. That's what I believe in. I believe that the issue is with the guaranteed money uh, is, is the main issue. I think that they're not willing to uh, to get the soldier the soldier uh, done before they get paid. And and that's just the way, where the hang up is at. I mean, the guy is paying with a with a torn Libram. So uh, somehow his camp and the Cowboys camp, we already know that the Cowboys camp. When you make billions of dollars like Jerry Jones, you got a little stubbornness about yourself. And and I think that that's, that's the only issue there. <laughs> Not for 90 million guaranteed. If he's asking for 90 million guaranteed, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, oh boy, is getting uh, 60 million guaranteed. Khalil Mack is $141 million with 60 million guaranteed. That's quarterback money. And uh, I love... I love D Law, but sixty million guaranteed, one hundred and forty-one million. Um, mm, let, let's. 
I don't know. <laughs> but Swaggy D, what's up, man? Appreciate you for tuning in to the nation. Uh, Dallas has 19 million currently. Be careful. Yes. Um, I, I think that they already, they gave him 20 million, right? They gave D-Law 20. They still got, they got money to play around with. And I think that they still should turn over every stone. I mean, you can actually get Justin for cheap right now. You can get him for 13 or 14 million. Uh, now, you probably can put more guaranteed on that deal. You probably can throw in 22 million guaranteed and give him, get, or 23, maybe 27 million. And, uh, and, and that would still be a little bit cheaper than uh, signing somebody to a, a life eternity without them willing to bend to give you that uh, quote unquote, uh, uh, I guess, shoulder surgery. So it, that, that's the craziest part about it, guys. I, I understand how it feels. You know, uh, I love everyone. Uh, to uh, to be on this team uh, that, that we're looking forward to getting getting that next Lombardi Trophy, but it, it's it's a business. I, I posted it earlier today. I said you probably have to start treating these players like automobiles, outside of the quarterback and the offensive lineman. And, uh, and my whole rationale of this is will be like, hey, once the car gets three to four years with high mileage. If you still want that max return on your on your investment, because you know cars depreciate each and every day, you might want to start trade-ins. You might want to start seeing who want to buy this car while you can get the most value out of that particular car. Now, I'm not trying to use players as, as commodities in those fashions, but that's how the NFL has, has, uh, has turned the corner to. Remember, the NFL has turned the corner on making these players move from team to team man he hold on i gotta go back to this hit right here boy he made him his baby look at number 10 watch how he just come across there and just clean clock him mm, i bet you he got a five for hitting him this hard <laughs> oh my god he just tore that man in half man let's watch this again man let, let me go all the way back to this music right here man man that's crazy Watch this. <clears throat> I can hear uh I can hear uh Chris Chris Buman right now. I can hear uh TJ and all those boys talking about this boy. <laughs> he cleared that man clock, fam. Yeah. Man is crazy. All right, so let me see some of you guys' comments. I really appreciate each and every last one of you all. Thank you all for tuning in. TC88, thank you for tuning in. Uh, D-Laws, eat quarterbacks. Yes, he do. Man, D-Laws is nasty as well. I would trade Law to the Jets for a first and a third. Uh, Toot Robinson says that uh, he said he would trade Law to the Jets for a first and a third. Uh, my, my only thing is, when in a trade situation, in a trade scenario, you have to look for a dancing partner, right? I think that the only team that might dance with D-Law and dance with us would be the Colts. I think the Colts will offer up a first and a third. And maybe if you do something like that, I, I would want some conditions. I wouldn't want to get beat up with the trade. I would have something in there if D-Law plays over 16 games if he gets over five or six sacks it'll be a conditional second or it'll be a conditional third or it'll be a conditional first or something like that i would not trade d law for a straight up first and a third let me know if i'm wrong cowboy nation how do you guys feel about that because the only reason why i'm saying the coach because the coach got tons of money <laughs> they got so much money man they do and then uh ebb flus he's our he already know d law he already know what he's capable of. So I think that that's something that they will probably look at and say, okay, we'll plan, we, we, we'll, we, we will dance with that. Um, here's uh, from uh, Wilson Salute. D-Law, no more than 23 to 24 million guaranteed. 47 to 50. Oh, wow. I mean, D-Law would never settle for 23, 24 million guaranteed. When he's looking over there and looking at um, – He's looking at a Khalil Mack salary, and he's looking at Khalil Mack is getting paid. Remember, these players, you know, there's something about there's something about being top of things, you know, uh, pride and all that stuff, man. You know, so you gotta understand that too. It, it's it's a process where it's, 
after the on the off season they they go around they talk to each other and say hey man how much did you get and you know how much did you get you know so uh, it's always a that type of contest going on so you got to be mindful of that i don't think that they they would uh they would settle for something like that but i'm gonna pull up d laws or i'm gonna pull up khalil mack first khalil mack uh, contract and we'll see what they got too but i really appreciate you all for tuning in to this uh this overview of uh khalil not khalil mack but uh uh um, i got justin on 22 sack film look at it think about it think about what he can do for your team if you are not even a cowboys fan if you're a fan of of just the sport and uh and, and you would like to have him on your team I mean, can you imagine him going to the Patriots? <laughs> can you imagine him going to the L.A. Rams? Can you imagine him going to the fly, he goes fly? Can you imagine him going to that team? So you got to look at it from a, a total perspective uh, or, or the 49ers, you know. Uh, or you can imagine him, can you imagine Justin going over there to the, uh, the Chicago Bears? <laughs> I think the teams, I think that right now he holds like a, a major wild card in this thing because he can pretty much, by him being a free agent, he can just name his own price. He can name his own team at this point, <laughs> especially if it's uh, considering the fact that, you know, if, if he's not chasing the money, if he just want to chase that ring, he can go to any team that he wants. That's the, that's the luxury of uh of having uh that ability when you're talking about being out there on the market and <laughs> that's just the bottom line and it sucks it blows but sometimes guys like that with that type of prior presence out there on the line they can do crazy things uh huh nick blue what's good man appreciate you <laughs> i want to trade you and make us to the raiders i feel you on that i feel you on that I was looking for Khalil Mack contract. Yes, it's still yes, 141 million. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Let me let me show you guys what I'm pulling up right now. Show you guys what I'm what I'm seeing here. That's a lot of money, Cowboy Nation. But hey, you gotta pay the price to be the boss, right? <laughs> Signed a six-year mil, uh, 141 million contract with Chicago Bears, including 34 million signing bonus, 90 million. Oh, I'm I'm shortchanging. I thought it was 60 million guarantee. So he wants he signed a 90 million dollar guarantee. Where did I get that 60 million from? So he's his average annual is 23. So if D. Loft said he felt disrespectful, let me make sure you guys can see what I'm seeing. So D. Law said he felt disrespectful. So they had to offer him something. They had to offer D. Law something, right? Uh, so they signed him up with the franchise tag, which was uh, twenty million a year. That's all guaranteed. Every penny of that money from the franchise is, is guaranteed. So uh, D. Law, if, I, if I'm if I'm if I'm not mistaken, oh man, I'm been so off with my numbers. If this kid is getting 23 annually, uh, I mean, D-Law will want either 23 plus or right at 22 with some with the higher uh, guaranteed money. If he really wants this particular money, and 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 trust me, I'm not trying to say that uh, the Marcus Lawrence is not worthy of that. You know, we we all been talking about this on so many um, <clears throat> levels. You know, so I, I think that. That's something that he probably have to say to himself. Okay, I want this. You know, let me see market value. We're gonna look this up. See, his market value is nineteen million. And and this is this is what his agent is gonna say each and every time we talk about this. When we talk about money and money um, makes the world go round, they're gonna say, hey, his current contract. It's twenty million as with the franchise tag, of course. But in the NFL, he's ranked number eighteen as, as all of the players that's in the NFL. As far as defensive end, what that say right there? That says number one. 
He's number one in the entire NFL. And number two is the defensive end rank as in fair market value, 19.6 million. That is a lot of money. Uh, so uh, what he wants right now is that, hey, I want to get that full guaranteed money. In return, I wish that we can just move all this stuff out the way for our uh, salary cap. But it's not going anywhere, guys. It's not. As far as uh, statistical comparisons, this they got all this good stuff right here. Uh, they got him uh, in the top of all this stuff right here. 90 point, was it 90.2? The average is 85.28. Khalil Mack is just above him at 91.25. Hey, stops. This is they talking about stops. Khalil is at three. He's at 2.3. Uh, hurries this is like rushing the quarterback this is considered quarterback pressure Khalil is at a 4.03 DeMarc is at 2.81 tackles uh, I guess tackles per game on an average base you're looking at 3.59 close to four, four, four tackles a game he's at 2.44 I can say that these two positionings right here Khalil Mack is more so out in space and Demarcus Lawrence more so closer into the line is playing defensive end and he plays mostly against the right tackle uh, all right so you're gonna look at that droppage of numbers but sacks you're gonna look at 6.7 or 0.67 with Khalil and you're looking at 0.78 that's more with the law in the building so guys i really appreciate each and every last one of you all for tuning in to this late night film review late night film lookup of justin uh, i think that he will fit in anybody's scheme in the national football league i think that justin can create pressure crash off the edge can get to the quarterback the name of the game is putting the quarterback on the ground especially when the defensive side of the ball i love the hurries he can get that too he's a seasonal guy four-time pro bowler as well as a one-time 22 sacks in one season guy he had a 9.5 sacks in 2017 and nine sacks in 2018 keep in mind he only played 11 and a half games or 12 games so put that up there. Really appreciate each and every last one of you all. Let me know how you guys or what you guys think of Justin. Is he a game changer? Is he a guy that a team should reach deep down in their pockets and at least offer this guy 20 to 22 million guaranteed and uh, split it up for two years and say, hey, we signed you for a two year contract for this amount of money. Would you be willing to play for us for that? And we can throw in some incentives. We can throw in some um, some other bonuses as it relates to like workout bonus and game game day bonuses. Maybe they can do that when you're talking about older players. Let me know. Let me know how you guys feel. Shout out to you, George. Appreciate you, Dim Boys 88. Thank you all. Thank Miss Jackie. Let me see who else. The moderators, Incognito, my Cowboys family. Appreciate you. Thank you for being part of this thing. Don't forget to hit that like button, share this content, and Miss Scout and Pro. Shout out to you. Salute. Thank you for putting us all in check. Really do appreciate you. Toot Robinson, keep doing your thing, fam. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the bass. Salute. I'm out. Peace.